Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Sarcasm and Orgasms. I'm your host, Will, and I want to thank you for listening and tuning in. Now, on today's podcast, I have a very special guest. I have my man all the way from the Ohio border, Mr. Joel Lamar. What's going on, sir? What's going on? Not much. Staying blessed and staying safe. Yes, I hear that definitely. We have to stay safe out here. Um, thank you so much for joining me, man. I know it's you know been a while. We've been trying to like link up together, so thank you for sitting down with me. So um, I know I know about you, Joel. Why don't you go ahead and tell the people a little bit more about you? Well, uh, I'm 47 years old. Uh, get to the get right to it. I uh, did 14 years in prison and been out. I've been out uh, November be 10 years wow. and then okay. I'm a father of six. Uh, they're all between the ages of 30 and hold on for a second. Hey, cut that off. Been in, uh, I've been out since 30 since I was, uh, no, I've been out since November 2020. 2000 and uh, hold on, 13, 12, 2012. So this November would be a decade that I've been out. Uh, I'm about realness. I'm about keeping it, as they say, gangster. Uh, <laughs> I'm simple. I'm. It is. You know, just about that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Hey, that's good. That's good. We have more brothers just trying to keep it simple and keep it real. So I I appreciate you, man, for trying to do all you can. Thank you. So um, you were like, when we did the little backstory, you were telling me you were a barber. How did you get into becoming a barber? Did you, that start when you was in or was it something you was doing before you went in? I, uh, so to make to make it all make sense, my it's in my blood. My grandfather was a barber. My I got I would, count, I would say like no exaggeration. I can name like maybe close to twenty individuals in my family on my mother's side that does hair, cosmetology or barber. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was in prison, I decided to you know that old saying either you do the time or let the time do you. You know, I'm going to do the time and I wanted to get something out of it. After I got done dealing with my uh, internal issues and things of that nature, I decided to take it to another take it to another levels because everything has levels to it. And you know, I just I wanted to get into barber school. So I went to barber school to preoccupy my time. Mind you, I didn't know that my family went as deep as it did with the barbering. When I knew that the, my, my village, I call them the village, my village that I come from has a lot of females. So I knew that they all did hair growing up. I didn't know nothing about the men in my family because they were either deceased or living in other uh, states. So I was drawn to it. And what I learned is it's more than cutting hair. I have an opportunity to have a, another individual in my possession for at least 25 to 30 minutes. So I can talk, uh, you know, during this. So when I came home, I got into barbering immediately. And, you know, it was a training ground, which I really didn't know at the time where I was going with this. But each year I start getting better with talking to people, talking to young people, just giving them what I would be. You know, when I first met my first white guy, because I was in a, you know, you know how it is, barbering. We don't deal with a lot of white people. But I met this 17 year old white, you know, white guy, and we started chopping it up. Because I'm, a, I like to feel people's energy. If I don't feel your energy, then I'm just gonna cut your hair. But if I feel your energy, I'm gonna open up. So you know, we got to talking. He said we went. To, I found out he went to the same middle uh, high school that I did, and he dropped out. So I talked him into, you know, because I did what I was supposed to do. I'm an elder, and as an elder, yeah. it's our job to. Uh, counsel and give wisdom to the young villagers you know you mm -hmm. think of avatar or any of them other times that a village a village is concerned tribe or anything they have a process where the elders give the directions and guidance and run things and the villagers play their role and there's a situation they'll go to the elders because the elders are worthy of going to so you know 
barbering, it, it became more than just cutting hair. I realized that I'm a counselor. I have people who call me and you know, ask me for advice because of the years of, that I installed and invested in them, talking to them. I'm a type, I'm the type that will make it make sense. It has, everything has to make sense. Some way, somehow, whether it's a crazy guy running down the street naked, someone say, why is he doing that? That don't make sense. Well, I'm gonna make it make sense. He might have some mental issue. Okay, yeah. let's move on. So I'm gonna make it make sense. And being a barber, it allowed me to have a voice. And I realized that I, I had a voice when I had a whole room of people in there waiting to get a cut. The music is off, can't play certain music. I got to entertain them. So I will entertain them verbally. Interesting, interesting. I, man, I love that perspective. That's, uh, that's unique and different. That's a different approach. Now, when you're, you're, you're doing barbering and you're filling each other out, what are like some signs that you like to look for? Is like, okay, I can talk to this person, but I can't talk to that. Like, I know everybody's different. I know that, but what are just some signs that you notice right off the bat that says, oh, I can chop it up with this person automatically? Being in prison, now imagine being in prison in a cell and you get someone who comes in there, you don't even know. It's, mm -hmm. It could be a killer, somebody doing a life. You could have killed multiple people. You could be the rapist, whatever the case may be. You don't know. So with me, I learned how to read people, you know, pay attention to little things. It's the little things that will add up to, you know, help you be prepared for the bigger things. It's just little small details. You know, people are particular. So I wouldn't expect them to adapt to me because I'm good at adapting to others. I, I, in order for it to make it work, I'll adapt. I'll be the bigger person and fall back and, you know, just filling it out. So when I person comes in, I learn, I'm learn, I learn how to read their energy. You know, we're all consist of good and bad energy. You know, like the good side of the force and the dark side of the force. So <laughs> yeah. with, me, with me being so tuned into my energy, it allows me to feel other people's energy. And I, I do little tests, you know, like uh, I'll ask them, they'll ask me how much it is and I'll tell them. And you can read a person by looking at their facial expression. The facial expressions will tell you everything you need to know. Yeah, Even if yeah. the words that are coming out of their mouth aren't adding up with their expression, yeah, I'm going with your expression. So I get a feel and uh, it's just a natural gift. It's hard to explain. It's just. You know, we're drawn. You ever walked in, you ever walk past somebody or be in a room full of people and you stand by somebody and they just, you feel them, you feel comfortable enough to talk to them. And then, you know, y'all got a, a, you know, a dialogue going on. You don't even know this person. I have, to, I have the ability to make people feel comfortable around me because that's my job. I want people to feel comfortable around me. So if you're comfortable, I'm comfortable. So I would like test them, say a little thing. And if their response wasn't what I think it is, because some people just want to come in and get their hair cut and, you know what I'm saying, just be relaxed for a good 25, 30 minutes. So I'll let them be. But that's that's here and there. Majority of people, I can feel, I'll talk. And when I talk, either I'm talking to a client, because the universe put me in a position to talk to a client and I got other people, you know, sitting and waiting. So they're listening. And when I'm talking, I'm politic and I'm popping with, I, what I call it popping popcorn. You know, my popcorn is seasoned. I'm popping popcorn and it's very seasoned. They're going to want to eat. So when they get in my chair, either they'll chime in or listen. Or I can just tell they shaking their head. When they're doing that, I know they're listening to me. They're feeling it. So when they get in my chair, I can automatically continue. So I just, you know, feel their, feel their energy, feel them out and just go with the flow. I'm gonna go with the flow type individual. Flow ain't right, I'm gonna fall back and just do my job. If the flow is right, I'm gonna jump on the flow, I'm gonna jump on it and we're gonna do what we do. Mm -hmm. So when you're sitting here popping your popcorn, um, when it comes to barbering, what are, what's been like some real difficult heads that you just can't cut? Like, have you had that experience before? Uh, Men, I deal with a lot of Africans. Somali, <laughs> okay. Columbus, Ohio. North side of Columbus, Ohio. I deal with a lot of Somali. So it took me time to understand. Because mind you, I've been gone for 
over over a decade and a half. And I didn't, you know, I'm dealing with my kind and white people majority of the time. And some Latinos, a couple of Asians, whatever the case may be, but no Africans. So I didn't know, understand how to deal with them. So in order for me to understand how to deal with these Samayans, I went back and did some research and it took it all the way back to, uh, you remember that movie, Black Hawk Down? Mm -hmm. yep. That's how the Samayans came to the United States. That whole scenario. So I did my research, documentaries, and, re and read up and got to understand it. You know, I never knew, met a Somalian, figured out how they operate mentally. And, you know, when a situation isn't right, I have the ability to calm it down. Like I said, I'm gonna make it make sense. Most people see things at one angle. I have the ability to look at, show multiple angles. Like, look at it this way. You know, like say a person say, I'm about to go do this, that, and that, you know, some other goofy stuff. I'm gonna be like, I, I'm gonna be like, well, look at it this way. If you do this, that, and other, this, that, and other is gonna happen. Are you prepared to do that? So instead of just, so not, the average human being is used to a person riding, riding with them. Like, yeah, I feel you on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you got to be able to turn the narrative into a, a better direction than what they're headed to. Because people think with two ways. They think with their emotions and they think with their intelligence. So I'm figuring out which one it is. So when they're in their emotions, it's my job to get them out of the emotions and make them think with their intelligence side. So I hit them with, you know what I'm saying? I hit them with what I hit them with. But if, if a situation comes up, it's really, you can't match energy. Because if you got two people arguing on the outside, everybody on the outside looking in, they're seeing two fools arguing. So a person can only do what you allow them to do. And if you allow a person to come at you crazy, they're going to they're gonna keep doing it. But if you grab a hold of it and take, you know, take the conversation and reverse it and calm them down, you're going to get better results. So I never really had a situation where I had to get aggressive with the individual because they're demeaning. I politely tell them, you know, this is just a way. You can't match negative energy with negative energy. You got to match it with positive energy. So I would give them that positive, positive energy. And I go beneath. And when it comes to a man, I go beneath their pride. And I hit them with, like, we grown man. If we can't have a grown man conversation, then there's no sense. And when you do that, that'll get them to think. Like, I always tell young kids, like, hear me now, feel me later. Because your mind ain't developed enough to hear, to feel what I'm saying now. But later on, because we all go through life like when we get older. Yeah, I know it. That, now I understand what auntie, mom, aunt was talking about. Because back then, yeah, I didn't. So once I get them out of that emotion and into their intelligence, we can have an adult conversation. So it's all about taking control of the situation and making it work for you and not against you. Because when you got two people going at it, ain't nothing good. Two negatives equals craziness. Got you. Man, that makes so much sense. <laughs> so much sense. Like, because some of the things you were saying, I, I'm i drawn back to, like, you know, I still listen to my grandma. She was like, I used to tell you this as a kid. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I was hard-headed then, but now I'm not. So you, you hit the head on that one. You really did. And just like you said, like, elders telling, you know, people, like, it goes back to that saying, it takes a village to raise your child, but nowadays, yeah, you know. no one wants, no one wants to raise a child anymore. They just want to no. throw it to just one person and just let it go. And that's not how I'm going to do it. Kids are clay. And as adults, it's our job to help mold them in the correct way. And that is the problem with today's youth. They're not molded in the correct way. So if you got clay and you don't do nothing with it, it's going to be just as it is. But if it's, as, you know, it'll get hardened and it'll be what it is. But if you got it fresh, you can mold it how you want to mold it. And it takes a village to do that because we're all, you know, we, we, we all we got for real. It's true. our people against the world. Very true, man. Very true. You are spitting some game tonight. <laughs> yeah. So I appreciate that. Um, so, when it comes to barbering, what are some things you enjoy about it and other things that you just can't stand? The best thing I enjoy about it is I when I first started and I used to see older barbers uh, talk about how they, you know, uh, uh, he 21 years old. He come in like, man, I've been knowing you since you was three years old. The beauty of barbering for me is that I get to see little kids grow. I've been doing this for nine years. I... I have multiple, I'm not going to say multiple personalities, but I have different sizes. Like I have Corey, he loves kids. Corey, he, dress, he dresses up in Spider-Man outfits. He has little kids spend a night. He go to birthday parties in Spider-Man. You know, he, he's very childlike with the kids. Kids love him. 
I have Flip, who did all the time. He's a crazy person. I couldn't be Corey, who I was, who I am in prison. I had to be Flip. That's the one who got me in prison and did all this crazy stuff. And then I have Lamar. Lamar is a lady man. You know, when I'm in, when I'm talking to ladies, I'm in my Lamar mode. He's the sucker for love. I like identifying myself and have a clear understanding on how I operate, so I can operate to my fullest. Then I have Corey Lamar. You're talking to Corey Lamar. I know it sounds crazy, but if you think about it, back there's a movie called Split. This guy is, is, is Split. Uh, it's uh, Unbreakable with Bruce Willis. And yeah, right, so you know you know you know. that's where I got that idea. Like you know, I analyze my own. Always analyze myself. So with that being said, I have eight eight year olds who I've known since two and since they were two and three and we bond and i'm watching them grow that's the beautiful beautiful thing second beautiful thing is i get people come to me asking me for advice uh asking to talk asking to just vent and you know when when a person there's a difference between venting and, co and complaining when someone's venting they just want to get it out and they want they don't want no interruptions they just want to get it out they don't care what you got to say just get it out when they're complaining they just you can you can give solutions to complain. You can complain about your kids, your girlfriend, whatever the case may be, and you can give solutions to how to handle that. But I will open up my door and make sure that people know that they have somebody they can talk to. I didn't have that, so what I do is I treat people as if I was in their position when they come to me with their problem. It's my job, it's my duty as an elder to uh, to give these people the wisdom that I have. And what I give them is what I would want to have if I'm in their seat, in, in their position. Uh, meeting every, meeting different people, man, I meet so many different people, man. I met people from countries in Africa that nobody's ever met. Like, I'm from such and such. I, uh, I never met a person from that state or that country. Also, uh, just connecting in, in uh, what do you call it, networking. That's a beautiful part of it. networking. I understand that I have this person in my chair. I have his attention for 25 to 30 or how long, ever long. What I don't like is the games that they play. You know, humans play a lot of games and it's our nature to try each other, whether it's a good try or a little try. Kids try us, kids try us all the time. Others mm -hmm. try it all the time. They try to get out on it. So when people come with that, it aggravates me. And then you have what I, I call soul urgers. These are people who just don't know how to get their head. Just sit in a chair, take directions, and let me get you up out of here. They want to turn their head and look and this, that, and other. Then you got those who don't like the price. It's disrespectful for you to tell me about, you know, what I should charge my skills. This is my skills. You know, I don't care what such and such down the street charge $20 and I'm charging $30, go to them. They complicate, real recognize, real a lot of times. Cause I, like I said, I test people. Cause when I, when I want to see something, I want to see what you're about. So I know what type of energy to give to you. I'm very selective in who I give this energy to because a lot of people will waste my time and my energy. So what I do is I'll hit them with, I got little tricks that I use to try to identify where a person's energy at, where their mind stay at, and what frequency they're operating off of mentally. So I will hit them, or and if they recognize the real, it's important for people to recognize the real, because only real people recognize real shit, you know what I'm saying? So I will hit them with the pricing, how much is it? It's, 20, it's $40, but you know, I like your energy, whatnot, so I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna take $5, $10 off of it. They're gonna give me the 40 and tell me to keep two 20s and tell me to keep the change. I'm selected, I'm socially selected. In order for you to protect your peace of mind and spirit and, and energy, you gotta be socially selected. And dealing with so many human beings, I've learned over the years to be socially selective in who I deal with. And if I don't wanna deal with you, I don't like your energy, I'm charging the 40, ain't no, ain't no talking about nothing, and I hope that you don't come back. <laughs> well, I tell you this. Um, I, I've I learned to cut my own hair. I've been doing that since I've been like 14, 15. The last time I got my the last time I got my hair cut, I'll never forget this. I went to this white guy, no offense, he was a white guy in the neighborhood. His name was Zippy. Okay. So I know my head backwards and forwards. I do a five on the top, 
and a four on the side, three or four, depends. He used a four all the way around. He fucked me up so bad that I have never got another haircut from nobody. Because I don't trust. Yes, it traumatized me because I don't trust anybody. I don't. So that's why it's like I I don't mind the the skill because it is a skill trying to cut someone's head. It really is like you gotta stand there and look and make sure everything looks good, all fours, because there's four sides to your head. So if it don't look good on the side, it ain't gonna look good on the top. It's not. <laughs> it don't matter what type of lineup, how much you taper it, it don't matter. If it don't look good, it's gonna be jacked up. So ever since then, I have never let another man cut my hair. Not because I don't want them to, just because it's a matter of trust, like you said. Like trusting that person to cut your hair, make it look good as if they about to wear that shit for the next two and a half weeks. Because exactly. if you exactly. if you got if you got spots everywhere or if you don't have that line that's nice and crispy, you just might as well just go bald. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. It's, it's that he, he wasn't paying attention. A lot of barbers will, you know, it's all about communication. You know, when someone sit in my chair, I make sure I know what they want. And you know, I, I you know, repetition gain through experience makes you better. Like if you're shooting free throws. You might, you know, a person who never shot a free throw, you start shooting free throws, they're not going to hit. They're going to be 0 for 10. But if they shoot 1,000, they're going to be 10 for 10. You know, so what I've learned is I have to make sure because some barbers don't, some people don't know the terminology of what they want. They'll say a fade and then be like, just give me a fade right here and here. That's a tape. Or they'll say a ball fade. I make sure I know exactly what you want. You want a shadow fade? You want a ball fade? This, that, another. Before I get into it, I want to know exactly what you want. And I'm showing them if it's the lengthwise, like for you, you said a two, a four, and a three, or a five, whatever the case. After I do that, I'm showing you the mirror. Like, is this cool? And I take it down. I'm like, no, it's either it's cool or take it down a little bit more type situation. Yeah. It's about communication. Communi humans don't understand how important communication is. It's the, it's the most important key. So in order for you to understand, you have to what? You have to be able to communicate. So my, I'm really big on communicate because what's understood don't need to be explained after the, at the end of the day. Oh, very true. My goodness. That is, that is facts right there, man. I can't clap that one. I definitely do. So, I, man, and I would love, I would love to get my hair cut by someone else. It's just, it's the traumatization that I went through when I was 15 that I just don't want no one to mess it up because now it's like with my head, I have waves, so I can't just go to anywhere because I don't know how you're going to cut my head. I've never been to you, so it's almost foreign. That's why I have my own clippers. I cut my own hair. And I would just love to have a barber just come, get me together, 20 minutes solid, because that's how long it would take. But it's just, I can't find someone like that. Look at it like this. You know how women have baggage from previous relationships? So do and that. they had yeah. a bad relationship and they take it and they can't shake that baggage and what's going to end up happening is they're going to miss out mm -hmm. they're going to miss out on something that could be good like through barbering man you get the right barber y'all vibe y'all become like i got lifetime friends i got family members i believe in turning i believe all relationships you know the longer y'all are consistent with the relationship and it goes smooth relationships are designed to be turned into bonds you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't just meet somebody and have a bomb. Like, it has time goes through. And like I said, I've been doing this since I've been home, since 2013. And I have bonded with so many human beings. So many. And for you to say, it hurts my heart, but I understand where you're coming from. Because you're serious about your appearance. And you should be. And you have to uh, protect yourself from being in a situation like that. So therefore, I was in the same boat. I didn't like my how my dad cut my hair. You know, he put a guard on it. I want waves. I got, you know, <laughs> I got some really good hair. I'm yeah. all waves yeah. type stuff. But uh, I took it upon myself to learn how to cut my hair. And look where it took me. But mm -hmm. point is, you don't want nothing. You don't want to let your past hold you back from your future. Everything is mind over matter. And why they say that? Because if you think about it, if you think about it, the mind, none of that matters for real. And yeah. you can get a good cut. You you can get a really good cut depending on who you go to. You know, if you go to a, a you know a nice 
ask for their portfolio. There's ways, there's, there's solutions to your problem outside of make, cutting your own hair. You know, let me see your portfolio, okay? And that's giving you confidence and allowing you to feel comfortable because you, you're not gonna feel comfortable. It took you a lot to even get there to sit in the chair, let alone when them clippers come on, you're gonna be nervous until you see the hair. And a barber should sense that. If he's paying attention, he should sense that and feel your energy and, and ask, is everything okay? You know, and if you explain it to them, then they really need to be on their job and make sure they make you comfortable and give you the job. Always show the mirror. Look, I'll turn you this way, you know, so you can see what I'm doing. You know, you can hold the mirror to make sure I'm doing it. Is that enough? Because what I do, I don't take, I take just enough off and show them. Show them one side, like say somebody got an afro, pick it out. I'm cutting this side off. I'm like, okay, is this cool? Now a little bit lower. Got you. I'm going to keep asking questions until you satisfy. And once I understand, through the communications what we had, I can go in and do my thing. So don't let nothing in your past hold you from anything in the future because you never know because everything is by design. You never know who you can meet and, and relate to in a situation like, like that. I wouldn't say it's holding me back. I just feel like I've gotten so comfortable and I've gotten so used to me cutting my hair a certain way that I don't mind it. Like, I love change, but I think that's just the one change that I'm almost scared to do because I've gotten so used to standing in the mirror 20 minutes, fading, taping me up, lining that. I mean, who can do it better than me, honestly? Not that I'm saying that you can't or any other barber. It's just, it's just like, it's my own head. I know my own head in and out to where I know how to cut it real quick, get in there, line it up, taper it up, and then I'm good to go. So, there you go. Yeah, That's a solution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, so it ain't, if, it ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. True, <laughs> very true. But there's just that uh, one time. It's just like that one time I just want to go sit in the chair and just have, you know, shop talk, sit there, hear everything that's going on, and just be in the room with the fellas. Like, it's our own little country club. Like, I miss that. Exactly. 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 It is the only time us men can escape from the world and relax and be among men. We can't go nowhere else. And, and, and that is very important because time, like I said, we got 24 hours in a day. Divide that by three. You got eight. Eight times three is 24. You got eight hours of work. You're supposed to sleep for eight hours. And the other eight, you got you only got eight hours to live your life. So you here and there running, ripping, running, ripping, running. Come to the barbershop. You're around some good conversation. You know, you're around some good men, good vibes. And you ain't got to worry about nothing out there until you done and leave out there. You mentally preparing yourself, however way you ready. People, you might get someone and you might sit in my chair and me and my boy, uh, uh, we talking to you. We talking some substance and we gonna make you do this. Yeah, you right, you right. You know, conversation. A barber is more than a barber. A real barber is more than a barber. He's a counselor. He's a guiding counselor. He's a he's an elder. He's a leader. He's a, a you know all that. You know. So that's what I mean by you know. I, not I, not holding yourself back, but you know, missing out on experience. Every man should have an experience in a barber shop. I didn't have that, you know. I learned to cut my my dad cut my hair, then I learned how to cut my hair. So I never been in the barber shop until I until I came home at the age of thirty eight. I got into a barber shop, but you know, a barber shop experience is is way more than just going there and getting a haircut. You know, you got your kids. From where I'm from, Columbus, like I said, I deal with a lot of Africans. And the way that's set up, the men go out and work. So therefore, the women stay home and take care of the kids. So the women are bringing the kids into the shop. Them kids need a male influence to them, you know, and that's what they get with me. You know, it takes a village and I'm a part of everybody's village that come into my world and who, or whoever invites me into their village. So, you know, you could be sitting and listening and politicking and you can add your, you know, you're a very intelligent man. You can add your piece to what you can add, what you have to add to the situation and giving somebody what they need. You have a talk, you have a podcast for a reason because you like the popcorn and your your corn, your popcorn has seasoning in it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing this. Mm -hmm. So it's about having the opportunity. And for me, it's about meeting others and, you know, uh, not kind, but what I call it, networking and connecting with other human beings. Definitely. Well, you have convinced me that I need to come down to Columbus and get a haircut. So, <laughs> and, hey, I'm telling you, just to be not even there, where wherever you at, like just.
sit in a barbershop and observe, man. Pay attention to how people cut and how they conduct themselves and whatnot. I mean, don't uh, you can continue doing you, but I would advise you to try to get that experience just one time so you can say, yeah, I did it. And that's like conquering your fears. You know, I feel like when we have fears, we hold ourselves back. Like I would have fear. I have fears of roller coasters, spiders, snakes. I'm like, I don't want to fear nothing. You know, I don't fear relationships that, you know, a girl may hurt me or whatever the case may be, broke my heart. I, I'm not going to, I'm going to get over that. I'm going to learn from that experience because that's what life do. It gives us situations where we can learn from. I'm going to learn from that experience and I'm going to make it better and I'm going to keep it pushing. I'm not going to let nothing in my past hold me back to my future because I will be missing stuff. Facts. Wow. 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 I mean, you just, you are so profound. Uh, I like it. And it's like, I'm almost at a loss for words because there's so many other questions I want to ask, but it's like, you said it all that needs to be said, really. So, man, I appreciate you so much. I really do. Thank you. Um, And so, like, what has barbering done for you from when you was in prison to, like, where you're at now? What has been, like, the biggest thing for you that's really changed your life and outlook when it comes to barbering and cutting heads? The growth, the, the challenge to get better. Uh, I, I have a, a short attention span. I Like I said, I keep in tune with what's going on with me. I know me and I pay attention and I have a habit to get into something and then lose interest if I don't see results. So every day it's a new day, it's a new adventure. It's, you know, it's 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 at peace. You know, I keep my life simple because I know if I'm out in that streets, anything can happen. I stay at home, I go to work and that's what I do. You know, and being a barber, it just, it, it, it just, so many opportunities and so many people and I learned so much and and people relate to what I'm saying and and that helped build my confidence to talk in front of 200 people in the protest would have you know everybody's engaged in what I what I did so I use that as a training ground to be able to do this and get better at this cutting the hair every I can always do better it's always a chance to learn different things and you know so much like you know how the hairstyle they got it nappy and and wow right here and it's all tapered right there that's called a duke starting five you know how they call it duke starting five because it was on the duke starting five when they won their first championship in 1991 i think no or uh do you know well anyway i don't know who it was but i think he came to the nba i can't remember his name He's supposed to be good, but he did. But anyway, the, the starting five, this was like 2000 and oh, maybe eight, 2008. Yeah, somewhere around there. The starting five of Duke, they were all like, you know, young players. They all had the same hairstyle. They don't call them the top. They just taper. I call it uh, organized chaos. because It's chaotic up top and it's organized on the side and lined up. So that's called, you know, things like that. And there's no ceiling with Barbara. No ceiling. Because you can get better. They come out with different styles. You, you can just get better and better and better every year. Every chance you cut ahead, you get better at doing what you do. And then networking and, and communicating, man. That's the beauty. That's what I love most. Meeting different people. feeling, Learning how to... I meet so many people that I'm learning how to read energy. And I'm learning mm -hmm. how to sense things and pay attention to little details. Therefore, it's making me better for the outside world with those tools yeah. that I'm getting. How to communicate with different races, how to communicate with different cultures, how to understand and, you know, translate and all that. It's just it's just a beautiful thing. Yeah, it is a beautiful thing, but a one ugly thing is I understand why some of these black kids and just black alone, they walk around with all this nappy hair like they'll get it done, but they never wash it. Like there's just shit that's always inside of it. And I can never understand that. I can't. You, you know, you know who's the problem with you? You know who 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 has that problem? Not has that problem, but you know who created that problem? The parents. Please tell me. You can't look at the kids. It's the parents. Like I said, kids are clay. You got to mold them and install things in them. Hi who taught you how to put hygiene on? Who taught you how to wash wash, wash your ass? Who taught who told you how to put grease in your hair and how important it is to comb? How when you get older, you're gonna be seeing girls and you know uh, fresh. You got to look fresh because you never know. Your first impression is very important. In any situations, you might be in a store and somebody might see, you know, like how you look and offer you a job. A girl might like how you look and get, you know what I'm saying? 
parents didn't install that into them. Calm your hair, wash your hair. They, kids don't even know how to grease their hair. You got to get down in there and grease your scalp. Not your hair, grease your scalp, because that's where it all starts. So it ain't the kids, it's the parents that need to be held responsible because they're responsible for teaching these kids and molding these kids the correct way. Mm -hmm. True, very true. Man, you are a great father. I can already hear you. You like remind me of my dad when he was raising my brother and I to like, just be accountable for yourself. Do what you're supposed to. <laughs> and that's the problem. People can do that. Yeah, they don't. They don't. Well, man, I don't want to keep you. I want to thank you so much for joining me, talking to me about barbering. I didn't want to get in your lifestyle because I want to keep that separate. Not everybody needs to know your business. So, um, I'm, thank I'm you welcome so much. for that. I'm, I'm so welcome, welcome for that because my life is an open testimony, and we go through things in life to sh and, and, and to get through it and to show us who we are. Whether, whether we're weak, because situations are two, two things to you. They either make you or break you. So if it makes you, you've learned from things. And those mm -hmm. things that you learn, you share it. That's our job as elders. We share our experience. So who knows best about prison and running the streets and the consequences and all that than a person who's been there? So I have, my my, my life is an open, test, an open book because it's a lesson. I'm sharing my lesson with others from my experience. So I have no problem with opening up my, having my life and get deep down and personal with my life because it also allows people to know who I am. And that's how people connect to me. They look at me and hear like, you did 14 years? Like, yeah, they can't believe it because of how I conduct myself and I teach people and I talk. They ask me, how did you, how are you become who you are? It's just opportunities. And I wouldn't be able to give that advice to them and tell them that if I didn't go through anything, if I kept my life private. Now I don't like talking about that. They're not going to get no lessons out of that. I'm a, Elders are teachers. I'm a teacher of life and experience. So, mm -hmm. I, hey, I don't have no problem with sharing my, my life experience with anybody. There's nothing, I have nothing to be ashamed of because everything I went through is happy, it happened for a reason. And the reason is what it is. And it allows me to share with others. Well, I promise you this. I would love to have you back when we go in and deep dive a little bit more about your experience. You know, from the first time you went in to you getting out. So I definitely welcome you back to coming and talking about that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, man, no problem. Because you as an elder, you got to teach me and everybody else about what not to do. Just like try to enjoy your life with all the bullshit that's going on out here. Yeah. And that's how I got to where I got up out of that because I was I was. I was lost. I was hurt. I was in pain. I didn't love myself. Uh, I, I was suicidal. Didn't want to live here, you know, be here. I had to go in and change all that. So when I did that, you know, it allowed me to tell others how I did it. What tools that I use, you know, I over E, emotions, intelligence over emotions. If most human beings, they use emotion over intelligence. You know, you think about it. You Something happened, you get all wound up. And then when your intelligence, your emotions die down, your intelligence kick in and you start acting yourself, man, why you do that? Come on, man, you know, you know what I'm saying? So I I give them tools on how to control your emotions and how to communicate, how important communication is and how, you know, when it comes to young people, look at me when I'm talking to you, eye to eye. When you shake my hand, make sure it's firm because these these parents, these parents mm -hmm. and these elders, they really don't know how to, they, they really don't know what to do. How can I teach you uh, Chinese when I never spoke Chinese. You know? <laughs> so if I don't know something, how am I going to teach someone else? So it's, it's real simple. We just need to take the initiative to do to understand what it is and most of it's common sense. No, humans and babies, they don't parenting, we don't come with no instruction. But a lot of it is common sense. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, look, look, I don't know what it is where you're at, but where I'm at, I drive down the street and if I see 20 couples, male and females, walking down the street, I would say, 14 of them, the woman is in between the cars and the yes. man. Uh huh. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I yeah. would stop, I'm the type that would stop them and explain it to them. And they would do it. I would, I'm the type that will see a kid, a, a grown kid, like 13, 14, sitting in the car while his mother popped gas. I would tell them like that's not you know what I'm saying what there's a right way to do things and there's a wrong thing to do way to do things and people do the wrong things too much they they go left and they know they ain't right yes 
man, I gotta have you back. I really do, Joel. I mean, you got so much knowledge that I just want to be able to share with everybody because we need more elders like you. We really do. Really I mean, I was fortunate. I was able to have an elder like my dad, who I still go to this day. He even tells me when I'm fucking up, even when I think I'm right. But it's always good to have that male. And truly, we need more male influences in this world because it's lacking. Oh, it's we really, really do. We really do. Male, the women are doing too much. They are being account. They have to do too much. And that is the problem with the young society today. Because they, you know, mothers, a woman can't raise a man. I have, And a man can't raise a, a daughter into a woman. You know, but we can install. I have an eight-year-old child who lives with me most of the time. She goes to her mom on the weekends. But anyway, I can give her things that help her become a woman. I can't make her a woman because at the end of the day, it's on her. But it is my job to mold her in ways that I feel like a lady would be molded. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Oh, man. Okay. I got to have you back in a couple of weeks so you can talk. <laughs> you can talk some more. Um, so, I, as from my understanding, you're going to start getting to your own podcast? Well, I'm taking some advice from my elder uh, who told me that if before I get a barbershop, I need to get into it and get the experience and whatnot. And that way, when I go virtue out to my own thing, I'm experienced enough in the transition to be much smoother because I know what to expect. So with this, I want to get on as many podcasts as, as possible because it's a training ground. I'm very new. This is my second podcast. I got to make a portfolio. I'm learning so much. So this is the school of hard knocks. This is school to me. So when I feel like I'm ready to graduate, when I do get my own thing, I'm going to have all the experience that I need to make that successful instead of just jumping into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So All right. I'm I just plot, asking questions. I, I plot, I plan, and I execute. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, just want to ask, just in case the listeners, they're really uh, hearing what you're saying. And because a lot of things you're saying is very profound. That's the way I'm taking it. So I hope everybody is as well. So when you're ready and when you're ready to launch, please come back on, tell us about it so we can all tune in to the pop and pop on the season. So. Thank you so much. Each one teach one and teamwork make a dream work. I push your stuff, you push my stuff. Let's work together. That's what we that's what's wrong with our community. We don't know how to come together. We're all like crabs in a bucket. You ever watch that in YouTube? Yeah. Put some crabs in a bucket. Yeah, each one one's gonna pull down the other. No, we need to come together and help each other out this hope. So it's situations like that where others can see. And like I said, real recognize real. And the real is gonna see that you got two brothers trying to network and make a difference. Mm -hmm, definitely definitely well man thank you so much for coming on and joining me i oh my goodness <laughs> i feel like i'm talking to my dad like all over again because that's what it feels like it really that's, 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 a, that's an honor that is an honor and i thank you for that that is a very serious because everybody don't have what you had and for you to say that i'm very very honored and that lets me know that i'm on the right path Mm -hmm, definitely and i would i would say it too honestly i mean there's nothing that you said or um, that you've been saying that my dad wouldn't tell me. So it's just like I'm talking to my uncle, really. Like he's just a second person in addition to my dad. So thank you so much, man. And I I send all great blessings your way, all prayers and everything to that nature. Please keep it up. Please keep up the good work. You do too. You keep doing the same. I'm loving your show. I'm loving your energy. You're young and that's what we need. We need more young black men stepping up and doing what they love and what they love to do is make a change. Get your voice out there, because we all have a, everybody has a voice, but not everybody know how to use it. That's a gift, and you have the gift. Well, thank you, brother, I appreciate that. So, like I said, I'll have you back on in a couple of weeks. We'll definitely dive into more of your life, and we'll go from there, okay? God bless you, be safe, and keep spreading that positive energy. You as well, my brother. Keep making these black men look beautiful each and every day so thank you so much man so you're always welcome when you ready to come back on just let me know okay i'm, I'm ready hey i'm ready tomorrow i'm, I'm here <laughs> to serve i am here to serve the people what i have and i hope that they enjoy it when they sit down and eat i i hope so too i hope so too so people this has been another episode of sarcasm and orgasm i've been joined by my guest mr joe l lamar man he's talked everything about barber chopping and just being a great black barber yes black barber 
Okay. So make sure you keep it locked here and I will talk to you all soon. Thank mm-hmm. you.